You see the colors in me like no one else. Chapter 2 Kurt hopped up on the stage, sitting and swinging his legs, looking at Blaine, who was now pacing. Blaine. You broke up with me. I don't understand why you're acting like I did something wrong. Kurt said, his voice a low whisper. Stilling, the shorter boy turned, arms crossing and giving Kurt a reprimanding look. Blaine finally said to Kurt. Not broke up, Kurt. A break, a break so I could concentrate and not feel like I was being a bad boyfriend for not being here for you. Meaning, you were not my boyfriend Blaine. You broke up with me. Kurt said, blinking at him, not sure why this was even up for debate. Blaine, we were not together. Break up or break, doesn't matter. I had every right to accept Sebastian's invitation to coffee and lunch and dinner. Blaine opened his mouth, face red with anger, but Kurt eyed Blaine and held his hand up and continued speaking. Just as you had a right to make out with the guy from the barbershop quartet at the amusement park. Seeing Blaine's wide-eyed, shocked look, Kurt jumped down, eyes suddenly bright and sharp. His sweet smile was long gone. Mike and Tina went. Tina didn't tell me, but you underestimate just where the loyalties of the guys lie. Kurt's arms crossed in irritation. So, we were on a break, and you could make out with random park folk, but I was supposed to sit here in Lima pining for you? Wa what? No. I just, that's not what I meant at all Kurt. Blaine responded, sputtering. I just meant, I came back to you. To us. You, however, have. Found someone who wants me for me and doesn't want to take a break from me to play tonsil hockey with someone else? Kurt asked his voice, honey sweet. Blaine bristled further and turned on his heel, storming up the aisle. The shorter singer stopped at the open door and turned back to Kurt and called back, obviously, you're not in a good place to discuss this issue like adults. Don't worry, Kurt. I forgive you for this mistake. I'm not going to give up on you because of one lack of judgment on your part. I'm here to show you that we belong together. Before Kurt could respond, Blaine made an exit of Rachel Worthy proportions. Shoulders slumping Kurt groaned and got his bag over his shoulder so it rested on his hip and headed for the choir room in hopes of heading off the hunting party because he had no doubts his bastion could talk the guys into helping him kill Blaine. When he got through the door, the boys were already up arguing about if they could get away with leaving two minutes early. No, you can't because I'm here and Blaine's right there. He showed up before me. Did you think he'd show up in a room full of you guys if he'd done something to me? Kurt asked the question as he rested his hand on his cocked hip. The assembled boys turned to Kurt before looking at Blaine, Hey! When did you get here? How did you not make noise? Dude, you're small and sneaky. That makes you twice as suspicious. Puck glared at Blaine, and he'd never liked the guy because he believed that Blaine had seduced Kurt into going to Dalton. Noah. Kurt scolded before snagging Seb by the jacket and tugging him back to a seat with a slight smile on his lips when the taller boy instantly wrapped an arm around his waist. Please be nice, we all have to perform together and attend this school and I'd rather we did it on peaceful terms, please? Puck was grumbling under his breath as he retook his seat next to Finn, but he did leave Blaine alone, as did the other boys, knowing they'd gain Kurt's wrath if they weren't careful. Tina and Rachel sat with Blaine, which made a few of the others obviously annoyed, especially Finn and Mike. When Mike stood, Kurt tried to grab him and hiss out a not worth it to the dancer only to be ignored. Mike was seriously pissed at his girlfriend, is this your doing? He whispered, having squatted down in front of her seat, staring at her eyes trained right into hers. Tina seemed to shrink just the slightest bit. No one had ever seen this side of Mike, he was typically fun and laid back. Almost silent. Right now, his back was stiff, his posture near impeccable, tone clipped, jaw tense, and eyes hawk-like in ire. Tina, I asked a question. You can't talk to her like that. Rachel snapped glaring at Mike, shrinking back when Mike turned on her. 
Turning to look at the loud-mouthed girl, Mike's glare intensified. I wasn't speaking to you. When I do, you will know it. His tone had become much more severe as he spoke to the other girl. Make Feng. Tina switched to shocked Chinese quickly, trying to defend herself only to have Mike stand and snag her by her wrist, pulling her to the hall. It's rude to speak another language in front of people who can't understand you, Tina. I'm also not arguing with you in a group setting. He pushed the door shut, leaving them in the empty hall. The stunned New Directions could hear slightly raised voices and clipped Chinese rapidly spitting back and forth between the couple. Mercedes looked around in surprise, what was that about? I've never heard Mike even talk other than to tell us about choreography. Sebastian gave her a side eye, with as many different cultures as you have in this one club, you think you'd all be better acquainted with what just happened or with understanding not crossing lines when it comes to how they deal with their cultural situations. He answered but was frowning. What is that supposed to mean? The curvaceous diva crossed her arms asking, already on the defensive. Kurt was frowning now as well as looking to Sebastian. The green-eyed French boy just sighed before he began to speak, well, for example, Santana is Latin. Her culture handles things and interpersonal relationships a certain way, which I promise you are vastly different from how, let's say Quinn's family might handle them. Santana snorted but nodded. If Brittany were to involve herself in someone else's business that not only caused them trouble, but her as well, and would likely lead to bigger trouble for the group as a whole, well, it would be my damn job to deal with Brit and clean up her fracking mess, Aretha. Brit's my girl, and that means she's my responsibility. I'm not saying she's less than me or weaker than me or less smart than me. It's just the way shit goes down in the Lopez house. If my dad were to make a mess, my mom would raise hell and vice versa. Santana finished off the explanation for Sebastian, having gotten the gist of where he was going with it. Brittany nodded along, smiling. It's Tana's job to take care of me. Mommy and Daddy trust her, Lord Tubbington said Tana's the best person for the job, too. Which I'm pretty sure is Brittany for, in her family, the girls do what they're told and get coddled. Sebastian smiled at the blonde cheerleader who gave him a thumbs up. Rachel was glaring at Sebastian. She just didn't like him at all, Kurt was arguing with her again and fighting about stuff he'd finally learned to stop fighting with her about. Worse, her fin was starting to speak up against some of her ideas, and it all began with the green-eyed French man whore interloper. What does that have to do with Tina and Mike? Jesus. You're Jewish, aren't you? With gay dads? Surely you understand what it means to have cultural expectations and differences. He cocks his looks at her slightly surprised tone, coloring his words as he responded to her. Aren't Jewish men expected to marry Jewish women because that is how the religion is carried on? When Rachel nodded, looking surprised, Sebastian knew that it was Kurt who scoffed. Mike and Tina are both Chinese, right? Rachel nodded again. And both of their parents are likely pretty traditional. Given Mike's reaction just now and Tina's response to his behavior, I'd bet they have incredibly strong male heads of house. Chinese Americans, like most Asian and European Americans skirt a fine line between our cultural traditions and familial expectations as well as modern American behaviors. Sebastian explained. What you just saw was Mike's upbringing and cultural beliefs getting the better of him. He's likely very unhappy to discover his partner involved herself in someone else's relationship. I'm willing to bet, for the most part, Tina and Mike have avoided involving themselves in such things at all. Huh, yeah. I never thought about that, but they don't tend to get involved in the crap that happens in Glee. Quinn spoke up finally. Involving yourself in another person's family or relationship drama is a big no-no, especially when you weren't invited to do so. Sebastian tried to explain further. Added to that is a loyalty issue. Mike probably feels that they owe Kurt their loyalty not just as a friend but as a teammate, and therefore, Tina has sort of gone outside all kinds of lines. 
She's lucky it's her boyfriend and not a brother or father that she's dealing with, if I'm honest. Kurt looked at Sebastian scowling, if you ever speak to me like. B.B. Sebastian said before chuckling and shaking his head. I believe you saw exactly how my brother treated his girlfriend. Yes, there are some cultural expectations, but they're nothing so strict as that. He gave Kurt's upturned nose a quick kiss. Luckily, the French are a bit more laid back these days. The green-eyed teen teased his boyfriend. How do you even know any of this? Mercedes cut into the lovely moment, looking a bit bewildered. Artie and Quinn, who were near the black diva, were looking equally curious as neither were very familiar with Sebastian. Artie had been away at camp, and Quinn had distanced herself by spending time with her mom trying to rebuild their relationship on a mother-daughter bonding trip. Kurt smiled brightly, looking at Sebastian, his smile looking slightly wicked as Sebastian looked embarrassed. Sebastian is a closet nerd. He has a fascination with anthropology. The study of cultures and peoples. The countertenor told his friends. The door swung open, startling several people, and Mike stuck his head in, Kurt and Sebastian, can we speak with you privately, please? Glancing at one another, the couple nodded at Mike and made to the hallway where the door was closed again. Tina stood looking red-faced and a little embarrassed. Guys, uh, I'm sorry. It wasn't my place, Kurt, to tell Blaine about your relationship with Sebastian. When, where, and if you wanted Blaine to know that should have been up to you to decide. She whispered, biting her lip as he finally looked up. And no, Mike didn't make me apologize. The teen girl flipped the long silky black hair over her shoulder. But he did remind me that I needed to get my act together. I let myself get caught up with Rachel's crazy. I'm really sorry, Kurt. She looked at Sebastian. And you, too. I haven't given you a chance. I just knew how happy Kurt was with Blaine, and you swept in, and he's all different, and Rachel said. Tina huffed, crossing her arms. I let myself drink Rachel's Kool-Aid. It's no excuse, but it is the reason I'm claiming temporary insanity. Kurt suddenly burst into a giggle and hugged the Asian girl tightly. You're forgiven. If anyone knows what it's like to get caught up in Hurricane Rachel, it's me. Kurt said before stepping back. Please, though, no more airing my laundry for others? I intended to talk to Blaine this coming weekend when I had things more settled with school and at home. Tina winced and nodded her understanding. Come on, let's get back in there. The bell should release us to the first period soon. Has anyone seen Mr. Schuster? Kurt asked as they walked back in, the four smiling together as they made for their seats. Mike had stopped to snap up Tina's bag and lead her back to sit with him near the others. Quinn was perched midway between where camps appeared to be setting up, nearer to Artie and Mercedes, but it was becoming clear that sides were being taken and having Rachel on his team wasn't going in Blaine's. Though Quinn did have to admit Kurt had seemed more settled and far less combative when he was with Blaine after watching him with Sebastian just on the last day, she could see how he smiled more than he had since new directions had been founded. Artie didn't know what to make of either of their newest members, both seemed somewhat taken with Kurt Hummel of all people, and it baffled him. Kurt just never seemed like the type of guy that even if one were into guys, would be the kind of guy you'd pick. He was always the one who seemed to be after other guys, Finn had once told him it was aggressive gay or something he'd read in a pamphlet. While the kid who used a wheelchair was pretty sure Finn was wrong, he could see where the idea came from. Still, here he was in the middle of the glee club in McKinley High School, and two boys were ready to throw hands over Kurt freaking Hummel. Will Schuster entered looking frazzled in a way that could only mean one thing, a meeting first thing in the morning with Coach Sue. Hey guys, sorry I'm late. Oh. New member, hi. Sorry, I don't know your name yet, wait, you look familiar. He frowned, opening his roster. Mr. Shu, this is former lead warbler, Blaine Devon Anderson. Rachel stood beaming as she spoke and gestured to Blaine, who was preening under the introduction. 
Blaine stood and took a quick bow with a flourish. It's wonderful to be here. Kurt, and of course, Rachel, told me such wonderful things about New Directions. If they were good, then it was probably mostly lies, man. Puck snickered, trading a roll of his eyes with Sam. Neither boy had the best of experiences thus far with their glee club. Kurt groaned, Noah. He was getting tired of telling guys around him to be nice. I give up. Ah, princess, don't give up on me. His hand covered his heart, and he pouted. You know you love me. Watch it, Puckerman. Sebastian glared playfully, pulling Kurt into his arms. Gaining a glare from the twin attention hogs and amused looks from Puck and Santana. Will sighed and nodded. Right. Puck, please. Rachel and Blaine, thank you for the introduction. Later in class, we can get to know you better, okay? Before you are all released, I need to inform you that there will be some structural changes to how things are done here in New Directions. The group started asking questions all at once, making the instructor groan in frustration. Guys. Guys. Please, let me explain. He tried to calm them by raising his voice as he spoke and waved his hands. Getting their attention back, he sighed. It has been brought to the attention of several school board members recently that our club is grossly understaffed and funded. As an agreement, an anonymous private donor has agreed to help with funds if we come up with either a second advisor or a better method of team management. Evidently, my having the sole decision of soloists in songs is not conducive to a fair, competitive arts environment of this day and time. Blaine and Rachel shared wide, horrified looks before shooting out of their chairs. They had plans for this year. Now with Kurt and Finn's rebellion, this French interloper, and this development, everything would be destroyed. Mr. Shu, you can't. They both shouted out in unison.